The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as in Mecca, he used to face the direction of Jerusalem. And when he went to Medina, he continued facing the direction of Jerusalem. And this was one of the points that the Jews liked. And they used to brag by saying that Muhammad follows our religion, and that is why he is facing our uh, qibla, our direction for prayer. And the Prophet did not like this, alayhi salatu wasalam. He did not like imitating the Jews and the Christians. Because as you know, we always pray in our daily prayers that Allah guides us to the straight path other than the path of those who are uh, led astray, uh, uh, the Jews and the Christians. So for 16 continuous months in Medina, the Prophet ﷺ faced Jerusalem. And he did not like this, but he was commanded by Allah. And he was wishing and hoping that Allah Azza wa Jal would change the direction of prayer to Kaaba because it was the building that Abraham, peace and blessing be upon him, erected with his son Ishmael. So, so why did they pray towards the Al-Aqsa in the beginning? What because was the this was the direction. This was the instruction of Allah. Remember that Allah Azza wa Jal made the five daily prayers obligatory in heavens when the Prophet ﷺ was uplifted to the heavens in the Isra and Mi'raj mm -hmm. event. And this was approximately three years before Hijrah. And this was as a, a, a sort of relief to the Prophet ﷺ after the death of two of his greatest supporters in Mecca. The death of Abu Talib, his uncle, who unfortunately died as a non-Muslim. And the death of his beloved wife, Khadija bint Khwailid, may Allah be pleased with her. She is one of the greatest women in paradise, as reported by the Prophet ﷺ. So, going back to the, 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 the facing of Jerusalem, 16 months the Prophet used to look at the skies as if he's wondering when the, the revelation would come to him. And... After waiting for so long, there came the direction from Allah Azza wa Jal that you should face the Qibla, which is the Kaaba, which is the holy house of Allah. It's the black cubic shaped building in Mecca, in the holy uh, city of Mecca, in the holy mosque. Now, in Medina falls between Mecca and Jerusalem. So it's 180 degrees shift. Mm -hmm. Instead of facing north, now you're instructed to face south. And the funny thing is that a lot of the non-Muslims consider Muslims to be idol worshippers because they bow and prostrate to the Kaaba, to a bunch of stones. And they say that we worship the Kaaba. Is this true? No. We do not worship the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify this issue, Umar ibn Khattab once, may Allah be pleased with him, came to the black stone. And as you know, Muslims go around the black stones, uh, the black stone, mm -hmm. well actually they go around the Kaaba seven times, beginning from the black stone and ending with the, with the, with the same black stone. And we kiss it if we are able to do so. If we are not, we just rub it if we're not able to do so, we just point at it, saying Allahu Akbar. Now, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, came to that black stone once, along with his companions, and he kissed that stone. And he said, talking to that stone, and he wanted his companions to hear that, he said, by Allah, I swear, that I know that you are just a stone, that you do not bring me any good or benefit, and you cannot prevent me from any harm. You're just a stone. And have I not seen the Prophet ﷺ kiss you? I would not have kissed you. The only reason, reason I'm doing this is because our Prophet did so. And the Kaaba is not our God, because 
Bilal ibn Rabah, may Allah be pleased with him, on the day of Fath Mecca, when the Muslims conquered Mecca and uh, 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 took hold of it, he, by the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, climbed up the Kaaba and called for the Adhan. And no one dares to climb over his God, if it's a God. Mm -hmm. So, it, we, Muslims <coughs> don't worship Kaaba. But, anywhere in the world, it unites them. So if you look at a person in the United States of America, or on top of the Himalayas, or in China, or in the Middle East, whenever they want to pray to Allah, they face the Kaaba. And Allah tells us in the Quran that the East and West are all for Allah. So even if you don't know the direction of the, of the Qibla, of the Kaaba, just pray and Allah will accept your prayer. So it's a form of unity for Muslims and it is also a form of obedience because it's Allah who ordered us to face the Qibla and the Kaaba. But um, didn't the Prophet Sallallahu when they turned to the Qibla, um, having, knowing that 360 gods were still in there, didn't he still feel like, you know, um, he shouldn't really be praying there until the Kaaba was empty of all its idols? Well, he was not present there. And even when he was present there, the Prophet ﷺ used to go and face the direction of the Qibla, of the Kaaba, though there were the idols surrounding it, because he was praying to Allah and not to the idols. And here we have to look at the intention. The intention has a very important role. First of all, your hand are cuffed, your hand are tight, you, you cannot do anything else, you have to pray. Mm -hmm. And because they have done these wrong things, this does not prevent you from praying. For example, one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ once came to the Prophet and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have took a vow on myself, I made a nether, that I would slaughter a camel in an area close to Medina called Buwana. And this hadith was reported by Imam Muslim in the Sahih. So the Prophet asked him two questions. Is there any celebration for the non-Muslims? He said, no. Is there an idol that people slaughter for? He said, no. So the Prophet told him, fulfill your oath or fulfill your vows. You do this. So the intention is extremely important. And the Prophet ﷺ himself had this objective in mind. And that is why the minute... He conquered Mecca. The first thing he ordered was to destroy demolish and destroy the, these the idols. idols. And in Islam, we are very, very sensitive to associating any with Allah the Almighty. It, is, um, it, it nullifies Islam to associate anyone with Allah Azza wa Jal. To the extent that we cannot even associate people with Allah verbally. So, I cannot say whatever Allah and you wish. Because and means that you and Allah are equal in okay, wishing. No. So if you tell me, can you stay for lunch? I said, well, whatever Allah and you wish. No, this is considered to be associating others with Allah. We're very sensitive in unifying Allah the Almighty and in worshipping Him alone.